Okay, so today I'm doing the headlights in the car. Um, I already took them out because I've already showed you how to take the bumper off. The bumper is kind of the biggest deal. Um, and I already preset my oven. So you have to put the headlight in the oven, uh, I think for like 10 minutes, 200 degrees. And all it's doing is just softening the glue. Um, and you have to make sure that you take everything off the headlight. So there are little like rubber grommets that basically keep it weatherproof. And there is a little plastic mount that comes off with the headlight that your bumper attaches to. Um, you want to take that off too because you don't want any of that stuff melting or getting ruined. So the headlights are getting done, getting opened, getting repainted, and getting closed. I don't know if it's going to be a two-part video. It depends on how long it is um, because if it is like 20 minutes, I don't think you guys are going to want to sit there for that long. So Okay, so this is the headlight now. Um, this ring, if you saw the other video, this ring is coming out because they started giving me problems. The website sent me a new pair for a super good price. Anyway, the, on the back, everything that needs to come off. This is the bumper mount right here. So this comes off with, with a couple of bolts. This grommet right here has to come out. All this wiring has to come off. This is a little rubber grommet that also has to come out. All these little screws have to come out before you put it in the oven. Then there's these little tabs on here. There's one here, one here. Um, they're, they're, all, they're all around the housing and you have to kind of use a flathead screwdriver to start prying it apart. You'll be separating the housing and this, the rest of the stuff comes off with flathead screwdrivers. Now I just have a bag for each headlight so I can put all the, these parts are really small and shouldn't take up the whole bag. Um, so that I can put everything in it, just so that I don't lose anything. I'll probably need a flathead screwdriver to pry this boot out. And when you pry this apart, you probably want a bigger size flathead because I think once this stuff is heated up, it's gonna be a little bit weak and soft. And these tabs are really small. So if you use a little screwdriver, I don't think that you're evenly dispersing enough pressure between each end of the tab. And I think that you might risk breaking it. A bigger screwdriver is better. I'm gonna shut the camera off while I take off the rest of the stuff. Um, it's just a couple of bolts and screws. Just make sure, like I said, you keep them in a bag or something so that you don't lose them. This was what was on the bottom of the headlight that is also acting as a bumper bracket for the front bumper. On the headlight as well, right here too, there are these little metal tabs. That's what is used to actually mount this piece of plastic to the headlight. They do come off, um, so just be careful with them and make sure you put it somewhere where you're not gonna lose it. Okay, so all I did here was just put foil under here, there, and over there, and then underneath it, I also have foil back in there, just to make sure that no point gets too hot. Both headlights have been stripped of all the hardware and the wiring and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is when it comes into the oven, I'm putting it on a rag just to keep the table safe. I don't know, just gives me a little bit more assurance. Okay. And I just need to get the tabs off as fast as I can. It's gonna be hot, so I gotta figure out how to do it. I might use this oven, this, I don't have an oven mitt somehow. I think I might use this to hold some of this stuff together while I start prying the light apart. Okay, so again, basically all that did was just soften the glue. So you want to start trying to take this stuff off. You might need more than one screwdriver. And just start prying along most of the bigger areas here to get it started. I guess you should have a napkin with you because the screwdriver does get gunked up with all the glue. I'm also going to re-clear uh, coat this lens here. Now that I'm, now that I'm doing it, it's, it's definitely better to have a couple of flatheads. Okay, now you could try to clean some of this glue out, but it will take a very long time. Okay, now everything in the housing is held in together by the Phillips head screws again. So I'm gonna get a separate bag and make sure I put the right screws in the right places. Make sure you look to see where the screw is actually going and what it's attaching itself to, so that you know what to and what not to disconnect. Oh, look at that. Now, when I did this originally, I drilled little tiny holes through here and I put the beading wire, which is just really thin metal wire, which is what you need to use to put it on anyway. Um, I put it all through the back here and then I used the windshield sealant as well back here to make sure it was held down in place and that it wouldn't come out. Okay, so while taking this apart, 
Um, I was trying to take this part of the lens out here, um, but it's all one big piece along here. So I undid these four screws thinking that it would take it out, but it's still being held in by something. The first time I had done it, I just kind of masked around the projector and just threw like a bag in here to make sure that nothing got covered. Um, so that's what I'm gonna have to do again. And these right here, this is just like your side marker light that would go here. Um, there's just a screw here and a screw down here. That, that's all that holds this in. And there is a side marker, a little orange amber uh, reflector here that comes out with it. They're both attached to the same set of screws. Okay, so what I'm gonna start with first is just cleaning up these lenses. They're really disgusting and I've got some clear coat there, soap and water and some 1500 grit. I'm just gonna sand this down and maybe put a coat or two on here. Now, because this is such a fine grit of paper, it's gonna be very easy to, to sand it down to the 1500 grit. Um, you basically just wanna sand until you don't really feel or hear it taking any more of the surface off. I do only have a clear coat on here, so I should only just be removing that small little surface of paint. What I'm gonna use is this chrome here. Obviously, it's not gonna come out chrome. When I had originally done this, I ruined it because I sanded it so that the paint would stick and it kind of, it was no longer, sh so here. These headlights, these housings here, these lenses, usually are just as shiny as chrome. So when I painted it, I ruined it. S some step that I took ruined it. And now it doesn't reflect well. Um, this by no means is going to return it back to the original state that it was in, but it will help a little bit when it comes to the reflection of the light off the housing. I just scuffed this surface with a 1500 grit and soap and water, just like the headlight housing. This is what I had used last time, except obviously it wasn't yellow, it was the color shadow. Um, and this is just a transparent paint. So it's just meant to lay over the surface. Um, what I had done last time, which I think ruined it, was I sanded it first for adhesion purposes. That's, that's usually how you're supposed to paint. But I think that this stuff, I haven't read it yet, but I think this stuff is just meant to just go on. As long as it's clean and dry, I think it just goes on and that's it. But I sanded it again so that this uh, chrome would stick to it. And after this is on, I'm just gonna put this on. Just I'm, I'm not gonna prep it at all. I'm just gonna let this dry and then go with this stuff. Okay, so these have been scuffed now, but I use soap and water, same with that stuff. So you just really wanna make sure that it's dry. Even if you dry it out with a towel, there are little grooves. So just make sure that you have time for it to dry. Both the blinker housing and the uh, daytime running lights and the bright light housings have been done. It does say, let this stuff dry 15 minutes. It says recoat anytime, which tells me that it dries really, really fast. I'm gonna let it dry 15 minutes and then I'm gonna start doing this stuff. I'll probably put two or three coats max of this on there. So there's one coat. Hi. Okay, so this stuff says to recoat in, in 10 minutes. You know, otherwise if you are if you have to go somewhere and you wait too long, then, then you gotta wait seven days and that's a long time to not have headlights in your car. Now the product says two light coats and one medium coat, and then that should be good. Now I just gotta do the other one over here, and um, these are done being painted. The lights are done. Um, everything is painted, everything is ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is heat up the oven, put them back in the oven, the halo is mounted to the housing. I like it, I, I, I really do like it, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'll show it off at the end of the video. Basically what I'm gonna be showing you is how to put it back together, but it's the same way you took it apart. Um, heat the oven 200 degrees, put the light in there 10 minutes, and then uh, put it together. I might just show them to you before I put them on the car, just because I, I, I'm not gonna wire the, the lighting today, because I'm, I'm, I wanna do it right, and I want to do it where it's hidden and not obvious and not a mess and uh, it'll just take a very long time and I have to be able to drive the car so the lighting just needs to work. If the headlights work then I'm good to go. All I'm gonna do now is just put them on the car, put the bumper back on, and I'm gonna have to wire them another time.
All right, lights are on and they are looking good. I'm gonna show them to you, but my camera's about to die in like 10 seconds, so I'm gonna have to end the video here. But uh, I will be doing the wiring and um, the wheels are to come. So yeah, check out the lights and that's it.